Okay, let's suppose your child has a problem like this that they're struggling with. The figure below is composed of six identical squares with total area 150 square centimeters. What is the perimeter? Right? We've taken some time, we've let them struggle. Maybe they're not making any progress. What can you do about it? Well, let's see if we can teach this problem by asking questions. Now, it can be really tempting to want to sort of take the pencil out of the hand and show them, well, let me show you, this is what you need to know, this is how you do this problem, and then at the end of it say, well, do you get it now? Does it make sense? Uh, a lot of times I think it's natural for us to do that because we want our kids to know how it works. But what happens when you do that is you're really giving them and yourselves, yourself the illusion of competence. Like, of course your child will say, yeah, it makes sense because you just showed them everything to do, but yet you didn't really let them do the thinking for themselves. So it's important to remember that the person who does the work does the learning. So we need to let them do the work and not us. So let's go back here again and think about what questions can we ask. And let's just focus on not all this stuff because it can be overwhelming sometimes to have all this stuff up here. Just focus on the question. What is the perimeter and the picture? Ignore all of this. Well, what is the perimeter? Well, what does that even mean? Well, the perimeter is you know, what, how long would it be if I had to walk around the outside of the shape? It's a good way to think about the perimeter. And I know I can see here it's made out of squares. Um, you know, if I knew the length of the sides of one of these squares, I don't know, for now, let's just call it x. That might be helpful, right? If I knew that, I know because they're squares that if this side of the square is x, then the other side of the square is also x. And then I can sort of put this together and see, I can just count those all up and I'd be able to solve this problem. But I need to know what is the, the side of the square. And they didn't give that to me. They gave me the area of this whole thing, which is kind of confusing. So, but we can start with that question. What is the perimeter? We made some progress just by asking a question. Now, maybe your child doesn't see that division is the sort of thing that they need to do next to figure out how big one of those squares is. So the next thing you can do is you can take this and say, well, let's take these numbers that I don't really have a sense of what, how 6 and 150 sort of relate to each other. Let me change it to 2 and 10. What if it was 2 squares with an area of 10 square centimeters? Well, when you do that, now those are numbers that sort of make sense to me. I know that 2 goes into 10 five times, so I have some sense of what's going on. And oftentimes, your child will then say, oh yeah, I see this. You know, it's, if there were 2 squares, and the area was 10, then the area of one of the squares would be 5. So now we can see that there's division going on in this problem. Then we can go back and look at these numbers and say, okay, I have to divide 150 by 6 to get the area of one of these triangles, one of these squares. So now I'm sitting here thinking, well, I have to do 150 divided by 6, but I don't know how to do that. So landmarks, teaching your kids little landmarks can be a really good way to help them with the arithmetic. So what do I mean by landmarks? Well, I may not know what 150 divided by 6 is, but I know that 10 sixes are 60, and so I'll just tell the student that, or my child. 6 times 10, I know that, and they'll say, oh yeah, that's 60, and then they can sort of build up their thinking. Well, I need 10, that gets me to 60. 10 more sixes would get me to 120, and uh, 5 more would get me to 150. So I can see that the answer here is 25. So the area of one of these squares is 25. And then once you know that, you can start to figure out how big one side is and then solve the entire problem. So with those three strategies, you're able to solve this problem without really having to teach them anything and certainly not taking the pencil out of their hand. So they feel like they're in control and they're the one doing the work. So here's another example. Suppose this is kind of a classic math problem. Uh, four people want to share three candy bars fairly. How much should each one get? So your child might not know how to solve this problem. So one really good strategy for this is to draw a picture. What does this even look like? A lot of times kids try and do things very abstractly and then they lose track of what's going on. So let's draw a picture. I'm just going to draw a candy bar as if it were a bar like this. We're going to assume all the candy bars are the same size. Right? And then how can I divide this into four people? That's kind of confusing. So again, let's look at what would a simpler question be. Well, what if we looked at this one candy bar and want to split this 
amongst four people. That I know how to do. I can break it in half twice into fourths, and I know each person would get a quarter. Okay, now we have a picture that your, your child can start to reason with, and then the, you let them figure things out from there. They might say, well, look, I can do the same thing to the other two candy bars. So I can divide them each into fourths, and then each person would get a piece of each of them. Well, a fourth plus a fourth plus fourth, that's three fourths. So I get the answer. Three fourths of a candy bar. So to summarize, there are several strategies that you can use even if you don't really know all of the math. The first one is going to be let your child struggle and then help them assess what's going on with questions. How do you know what's going on? What do you notice? Are there any questions that you still have about this problem? Make sure that anytime you're tempted to sort of tell them what's going on, that you challenge yourself to ask them a question instead so that they're doing the work and then they're doing the learning. So start with questions. Uh, other things you can do, make sure that when it's complicated, you substitute out some of the more difficult numbers with some things like 2 and 10 so it becomes easier to think about and so they can understand the underlying mathematics and then solve the problem. You can also draw pictures. Pictures are really going to help drive that concrete understanding of what's going on and build up their sense of uh, the number sense for mathematics. And then use those landmarks when they're stuck on arithmetic. And then lastly, don't be afraid to take a break. Sometimes your mind isn't in the right place to do these problems. Take a break, let the stress and anxiety pass. Your subconscious is gonna keep working on those problems. It's why people have epiphanies in the shower because your mind is always going. And then come back when everybody's in a more relaxed state and see if you can solve the problem from there. So I think if you use those strategies, you'll find you could really be helpful even when you don't know.